Welcome to the next lesson, finding and contacting suppliers. And here's what we're going to cover. Our plan for finding suppliers for your top product opportunities, how many suppliers you should contact for each of your products, and what to say in order to appear bigger and more professional, to get better pricing, and to get better products. This is where our business gets real, because up until now, everything we've done has just been us sitting in front of our computer. But now it's time to use the power of technology to speak with real people all over the world. But don't worry, there's nothing to be worried about. We've helped thousands of people with no experience at all do this before you with tremendous success. We even have our own proven templates that'll help make sure that you know exactly what to say and when to say it. By now, you should have narrowed down your product list to only three top product opportunities. You're going to want to find suppliers for each one of these. And once you get supplier information, not all your products will work out, and that's totally okay. You'll need then to contact five to 10 suppliers for each product opportunity. Your goal is to get pricing, MOQ levels or minimum order quantity, production time, and packaging options. Then we're gonna use this information to pick one product and to finally order a sample for it. Let's quickly go over the different sourcing templates that we've already created that you can use. We have the initial supplier contact message, the sample order message, the product and packaging options message, the price negotiation message, the pre-order message, and then the inventory order message. You can access all of these by clicking on the documents icon below this video. And all these are zipped up into one single PDF file. You simply cut and paste the part of the information that you want into your own message and then insert your own personal details, such as your name, your company name, the supplier you're communicating with, and the product that you're trying to get information on. Now here's something very important to keep in mind about these templates. You do not want to just copy these templates word for word and then send them to your potential suppliers. If you do that, it could actually cause your messages to look like spam and potentially be ignored or maybe not even seen by your suppliers. So after copying them and then pasting them, you'll want to make sure that you include your own details, such as your name, your product, the company you came up with, and also you want to try and slightly modify them so that your message is not exactly the same as everyone else. Now I've pulled up the initial supplier contact message on my screen, and this is the message that we'll be going over and sending out during this lesson. This contains all the right questions you need to ask your supplier in order to get back all the right information about your top three product opportunities, and it also makes sure that you come across as sounding professional. Like we said earlier, just copy and paste this into your own message, add in your own details, and then try and modify it slightly so that your message doesn't sound like every other message out there. Before we log into our browser and start looking for suppliers, let's do a quick recap of where to look based upon the type of products we're trying to source. For health, beauty, and cleaning products, you primarily want to source in the United States, or you can look in the EU if you also live there, although you might not find that many options. And to do this, we'll use Google. For health and beauty, that's pretty much anything that goes in your body or on your skin. Some examples are creams, gels, vitamins, and supplements. And we've recently added cleaning products to this list to give you more options to source in the United States. Now, as I mentioned about the EU, the USA still has the largest number of suppliers and products of these types to choose from, but it just makes sense to at least check inside the EU if you live there because it might be easier to not have to import these products. Now, for everything else, you pretty much want to source outside the USA and EU using Alibaba.com. Most of the products will come from China, and these are products that are usually just too expensive to manufacture inside the United States or the EU. So here are a few tips you can use when using Google to search for suppliers. First, you want to put your product name in quotes. That's called an exact match to make sure you're only pulling up that product. And then you want to follow it by one of these three terms, private label, suppliers, or wholesale. Now, I would only do wholesale if you aren't getting enough matches using private label or suppliers because we're not trying to find wholesalers. However, sometimes you will find that if you can't find enough real private label suppliers, wholesalers might be willing to private label for you. So we'll kind of use that as a fallback in case we can't find enough. Here's an example. So if you're looking for car wash shampoo, you would put that in quotes to make sure you're only finding the car wash shampoo product. So not everything surrounding cars or shampoo. And then you would put the words private label after it. And that would pull up a good number of companies willing to private label car wash shampoo. 
Now, if you start seeing too many results from sites that you don't want, such as overseas sites like Alibaba or maybe even Amazon, because we don't want to buy this off Amazon, you can remove sites by adding a negative sign and then site colon and then whatever the site name is at the end. So an example here would be we're looking for car wash shampoo that's private labeled and then we would put negative sign site colon alibaba.com to exclude all results from alibaba.com and this could be true for amazon.com or any other site that you start seeing results from that you don't want to see anymore now remember alibaba is overseas so for sourcing some kind of cleaning or beauty product in the united states we don't want to go ahead and pull up a bunch of results for alibaba.com now here are some tips for using alibaba in order to limit your supplier search to trusted companies you can check the following supplier types on the left hand side of the screen gold supplier and assess supplier that'll make sure that you only pull up companies that have paid to be a member of alibaba that's the gold suppliers and assess suppliers means that they have had an outside third-party company review them to make sure they are a legitimate supplier of these products and finally Initial contact should be made using the contact supplier button built inside of Alibaba.com. And we'll see that shortly here. But after you do that, if they want to switch over and start using Skype and you want to do that, it's absolutely normal and totally fine and much easier to do that because it's easier to have a real conversation back and forth without having to always send an email and wait for a reply. Okay, so let's start looking for suppliers. Now, when you do this, you want to capture all this information in your product opportunity spreadsheet. But follow along with me now as I go and start looking for suppliers of both Google and on Alibaba. So here I am on the product opportunity spreadsheet. This is the same sheet that Rich Henderson was working off of in the previous module. And you'll notice that I have the three products that he narrowed his product list down to. The rabbit corkscrew, the self-inflating sleeping pad, and the 50 jello shot syringes. I went ahead and just deleted all the other ones that didn't meet the criteria because I wanted to focus on these three for this lesson. I've also added in a fourth one, the car wash shampoo. And the reason for that is because the other three are all sourced out of China. And I wanted to show you how to find products sourced in the United States. However, there's a big disclaimer here. I would not recommend going out there and actually sourcing car wash shampoo. I looked at the numbers and even though it meets some of the uh, ASM criteria, it doesn't really look like a great opportunity to me. Uh, and I don't want to see everyone going out there and sourcing this product because you saw it on this lesson and really not getting great results. Uh, this is just for an example of how to go out there and find suppliers for a product in the United States. Now, in this workbook, you're going to notice several other tabs at the bottom that we've included here that didn't exist when Rich was showing you and going through all the product opportunities. We're adding tons of value to this entire workbook, so you can have almost everything that you need of this entire business all saved in this one workbook and maybe a few other documents that don't quite fit uh, the spreadsheet format. But if it goes into a spreadsheet, we're going to try to put it here in this one workbook so you can always reference it in the exact same location. Now let's go out there and start looking for a supplier uh, for the car wash shampoo. Let's do a search on Google because we know this is a cleaner and we can probably find it here in the United States. I'm going to go out there and copy the word car wash shampoo, put it in quotes. And I'm going to type in private label. All right, so already I can see that there are a couple on here. Uh, at the top, these are more shampoo. So um, even though we're not going to be looking at this because this is for hair shampoo, uh, it's good to know that this type of beauty product, like we mentioned before, can be sourced in the United States. However, we need to move on because we're looking for car shampoo. And I see that right here, private label car wash shampoo by the filling factory. So let's open that up in a new tab and we'll go down a little further and keep looking. So there's another for the filling factory. Uh, there's Alibaba. And again, we don't want to see any from Alibaba because we're just sourcing right now in the United States. So while that's on there, let's go put in the search term to remove all Alibaba listings. So that'd be the negative sign, then site, and then Alibaba.com. And that link should go away then. All right, if I scroll back down, I'm seeing the filling factory again, and I'm not seeing Alibaba, that, so that did the trick. So let's keep looking for more products. All right, there's one called uh, American Label Company. Um, that must be a label company, so that's not someone we would want. Uh, this factory direct pearl manufacturer. Well, let's open them up and take a look. And they're gonna keep going down. I don't see anything else on here. Let's go to the next page. 
Okay, so I'm on page three and I see one here. Um, it's by General Kim and I see the word private labeling in there. So this might be another one to open up. We're gonna open that right there. Now we have three tabs. So let's go up and start looking at them. All right, so the very first one is perfect. It's called the filling factory. And right on the very front page, they're telling you that they will private label car wash shampoo and soap for you. Uh, for pricing, you can call. For domestic companies like this, if there's a phone number on here and you're from the United States, I'd absolutely give them a call. Get that personal touch going. It seems to work better than shooting emails and Skypes in the United States. Overseas, people definitely want to use email or Skype. But if you see a phone number and you're uh, comfortable talking on the phone, by all means call and ask them the same questions that we have in the initial contact template. So this is a good opportunity. Let's go add them to our list. So I'm on the product opportunity spreadsheet. And what we want to do then is start updating one tab for each of our products. So you'll notice down here that we give you these blank tabs, product number one, product number two, product number three. Uh, the only information in these tabs is just a sample product. It's the corkscrew, we've left it in at the top, just so you can see exactly where to put everything, but all the information about the suppliers, I'm gonna scroll over here and show it to you. Uh, this yellow area is for supplier number one, where you can put in their name and their contact name, contact email, Skype, location, everything else on here. Uh, then in the green section, this will be for supplier number two, and the blue section will be for supplier number three. This way you can keep track on one tab of all three of your suppliers, for each product. So uh, we also give you a sample. So if you look at the product sample, this is one of these product tabs completely filled in for one product. So this is the rabbit corkscrew and I've went in and put some fictitious information in for one supplier. This is the hot goo company technology limited. There's their inf contact information, some timeline and notes of when I contacted them and got the, or the samples. Uh, same thing for our supplier number two and then the same thing for supplier number three. So this in this scenario here, these are three suppliers that I would have reached out to, tried to get information from them on how much their products are, the minimum MOQ, the size and everything so that I can determine which of these suppliers would be the best supplier for that product and then at the end of this, for all three of our products, we'll determine which of our three products is going to be our final hot product opportunity. Hope that makes sense. But we leave the sample tab in here. So if you have any questions on exactly how to fill it in, go look at it and it'll show you where things go. But for this now, I need to take the blank product number one tab. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it the car wash shampoo. That way I know what product this is for. Um, I'm going to go over to my product opportunities tab actually going to take the, some of this information and I am going to put it over here into this tab. So let's go over here and get that information. Let's put it into this tab right below it. I'll leave the sample up over there so we know exactly um, where that, what it looks like. But uh, the next piece of information that we enter, and I just entered this a few seconds ago, is for the first supplier, the filling factory that we just looked up. I put the name of them here. I put the website so that I can actually remember how to go back and contact them. Now, if I already had contacted them, I put in the name and email, Skype location if I had that, any notes about when I contacted them. If I got information back yet, I probably won't right away, uh, but I put the quote information in here about what the price is per unit, the MOQ, uh, but I don't have that. I'm just showing you exactly how to find suppliers and then where you're gonna be keeping track of every piece of information for each supplier on the spreadsheet. So then let's go and check out another private label potential supplier for the car wash shampoo and then I'll enter it into this tab on the spreadsheet as well. Okay, so the next one is Pearl. Let's see if we can see anything about private labeling. Uh, nothing there so far. Scrolling down. Ah, private label opportunities. Uh, however, I'm noticing something else. Pearl, even though this is a dot-com company, they are actually in Manchester. So if I was looking to source the United States, this would not be a company for me. However, if I'm in Europe, this might be someone that I'd wanna to look to, but I will close them down for now. We'll go to the other one. This is the General Chemical Corp. And right away, when I go on their page, I see they have a private label program. So this would be another company that I would wanna reach out to. And I'll scroll down. Here's their contact information down here, telephone number and an email. I could call them or email them, but again, I'd want to ask them the same questions that we did before on our uh, contact template. So let's go and copy this information over here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the next section for the supplier number two, 
and I just type this in right here, General Chemical Company, and there is their website. And again, once I hear back, I'll fill in everything else that I would need. Now, I could also go out there and find the third supplier, exact same process, uh, and simply put in their information over here under supplier number three. If you find more than three suppliers and you want to track all the information, by all means, feel free. You can simply go out there, and if you're familiar with Excel or Google Sheets, you can copy these sections and paste them and keep creating new sections for new suppliers. Uh, I just put in three because it seems like the right, the minimum number you want to check out. Uh, and if you're familiar with Excel, you can always make any changes to this worksheet that you want to. Uh, we've tried to do a combination of advanced enough so it does some calculations for you and gives you the right links and makes it easy enough to get organized, but also basic enough so even if you're not really proficient with Excel or Google Sheets, you can still use this by watching the training and kind of figuring things out. So now that you know how to look up and find private label products for products in the US and also to track them on our product opportunity spreadsheet, let's go back and start looking up product opportunities for those products that can be sourced on Alibaba. So I'm back on the first page of the product opportunity spreadsheet and the product that we're going to look for and source on Alibaba will be the first one that Rich found, the rabbit corkscrew. Now, before I actually go to Alibaba and start looking for it, I also like to pull it up on Amazon again, just to make sure I know exactly what it looks like, the name of it, and I can compare the features to the other products that we'll be looking up. So here is the Rabbit Corkscrew wine opener on Amazon. We see a really nice clear picture of it, kind of a rose colored metal there, uh, one lever on the top, two handles at the bottom. So this picture right there will be a real easy way for us to look at the other products in Alibaba to make sure we're finding one that's as similar as possible to this. Now I'm also gonna go back to our product opportunity spreadsheet. I'm going to look for the keyword Rabbit Corkscrew. Just gonna copy it. I could you know, type it over here, of course, but I'm gonna be lazy and just paste it right into Alibaba. There we go, hit enter, and you'll see it pulls up 5,838 products, way more products than we need to look at right now. So I'm gonna start filtering this down to make sure that we're only getting the best companies that are out there. First thing I'll filter by is Gold Supplier. This means that they are paying Alibaba a membership fee to be on here, and also adds another level of authenticity because Alibaba, like Amazon, wants to make sure that the companies operating on their website are legitimate and not pulling things over on people. So uh, a gold supplier is one step to make sure that they're doing that. Now the next one is going to be an assessed supplier. And this means that a third party company has actually vetted and verified that the companies are truly operating, making products and aren't just some fly by night company. So I'm going to select that. And you'll see it took the list down all the way to 783. So it definitely weeded out a lot of companies. Now that doesn't mean by any means that the companies that were removed from this list weren't authentic, legitimate companies. Uh, by and large, I'm sure almost all of them probably were. Uh, just means that the companies on this list have went that extra step of being verified by a third party to give us a higher level of confidence in them as a business. Uh, as you can see, uh, if I scroll down this list, you'll see these little badges here. This one's been a gold supplier for 13 years. This one for seven years. Uh, that's a long time operating on Alibaba. Uh, like I said before, if they don't do business well in Alibaba, Alibaba will remove them. So the fact that we're seeing companies that have been on here for a long time is a really good sign that these companies have been around and will provide good service. So let's start scrolling down and trying to find products that we want to investigate. Now this one down here looks, it's a rabbit style corkscrew, looks really nice, uh, nice gift set and box and everything. Looks at like the color might even be the rose color. I'll click on it so we can get a bigger picture of it. Uh, there were actually a yeah, really nice set here. Uh, however, the price, $18.50 to $22.50, definitely way too expensive for us. Uh, we're not going to make any profit at all at that price. So I'm going to just close down. I'm not going to look at them at all because that's way too expensive. I'm going to keep going down trying to find some good products. Uh, here's another one. Now, another one with a gift box as well. And uh, the prices are much, much better. So anywhere from $7 to $8 a piece. MOQ is only 500 pieces, down from 3000 from the one above. So I'm going to click on this and pull it open. And when you do this on Alibaba, it puts it into a new tab, which I like. That way I can just keep going down the list and opening up new tabs, and I'll have them all open so I can really research them more. Uh, now I'm going to continue going down the list. I want to pull up at least three or four of these. And again, remember, we want you to look and contact at least five to 10 suppliers for every single product to make sure that you really have found the absolute best product and the best supplier to work with. I'll only go through for about three here just because I don't need to repeat the entire process for you. So I'm going to continue down my list though. Some of these aren't anything at all what I want. That's not really at all 
uh, the rabbit style that I'm looking for. I'm gonna keep going down. Uh, let's see, let's, ah, oh, look at this. Now this picture looks almost exactly like the product that we're looking to source. I'll open it up here. You can see the rose colored lever on top, the handles at the bottom. Let's go look at the picture on Amazon. Uh, that looks like this might be the absolute product that we're looking for. And the prices aren't too bad, $5.90 to $13 for a set. Um, the supplyability, I'm not gonna count all those zeros, but it looks like, you know, in the millions of month, they can supply, that's not the MOQ, the minimum order quantity, that's how many they're able to make every month uh, to show that they're a large, legitimate, legitimate company that can supply even the biggest of companies. And now it looks over here also, the minimum order is only 20. So you might have to pay close to that 12 or $13 for that minimum order quantity. Uh, but if you just wanted to get started, this looks like it might be a really good opportunity to test out this products. However, of course, we wanna to try to get down to as low as possible. So you wanna get the lowest price for the lowest minimum order quantity as well. So this is definitely a company we might want to check out, but I'm gonna find one more. So let's keep scrolling down our list until I find another product that looks pretty good. <laughs> Those are true rabbits that are bottle openers, not the kind that we want. So I'm gonna keep going down. Uh, and I absolutely can go to the next page if I want to. I probably don't even need to, just gonna keep going. There we go. So here is a hot selling rabbit corkscrew. Look at these prices, anywhere from $1.90 to 290. It might not be exactly the same, maybe not exactly the same color of metal, um, but if we want to get going for a really good cheap price, this one might be an option. So I'm going to open that one up as well. So I have three different products from three different suppliers open right now. Now remember, you actually want to contact at least five to ten different suppliers. Um, I'm only going to do three of them because I don't need to repeat the process all the time for you. You'll know after the very first one exactly what we're doing. Um, but so for each one of these, I first, before I contact them, I just want to scan down and look at everything else on their listing to make sure that there's nothing that would exclude them from me wasting my time and their time contacting them. So first, again, there's the pricing, there's the minimum order quantity, 1,000 pieces. Uh, now remember, you can always negotiate that and try to get something smaller. Uh, there's the lead time, which means how long does it take them to manufacture it? 12 days, that is awesome. That's really, really short amount of time. Uh, the port they ship out of, Janssen Shenzhen, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly. Also, something I really like seeing down here, they're showing pictures of other products. So here is the one we're looking at, the Rabbit Corkscrew but they make another type of bottle of wine opener with some wine stoppers, a different type of wine opener, um, several different products. So what this tells me is that should I go with this company and start selling this corkscrew, they already have other products that I could very quickly source and sell and increase my brand very easily without even trying to find another supplier. So this company already looks like a really good opportunity. Of course, I have to reach out to them, have to talk to them, have to get a sample before we make any decisions, but this is definitely a company that I want to contact. Now I'm gonna continue going down just to make sure there's nothing else. You can see all kinds of details about the product and the company here. Here's their city of origin, Guangdong, China. Uh, anything else on here, the way they accept payments. This is a nice one. Um, TT is like a transfer method, basically wire transfer, but they also accept PayPal. A lot of companies on Alibaba do not. So again, they're making this really easy to work with them because companies generally don't want PayPal. Uh, they may charge you a slight fee, this company will, to pay for the PayPal fees, but at least they're accepting it as an option, which is another good thing. So I'm gonna keep going down. They're gonna tell us a little bit more about the packaging details, also some details on here about the actual product itself. Now you'll notice that they're gonna have some spelling mistakes, such as, uh, let's see, delivery's not right, reasonable's not right, that's okay. This is not their first language. I mean, I would not even know how to start writing in Chinese. So the fact that they're getting this close and writing in English is awesome. I would never exclude a company on Alibaba because they make some grammar or spelling errors. It's totally normal and I wouldn't even worry about that one bit. So I'm just gonna scroll down, see if there's anything else. Again, they're just gonna show me more pictures. Here's where you can supply, you know, contact them down here. Um, yeah, this is a great company to contact and start getting some quotes for it. So what I would do is I would click on the contact supplier button. I could do this also down at the bottom, contact supplier, either one's fine. I'm gonna do this because I want it to open a new screen for me. So it has our contact's name, Nikita Yu, from the Wai Long Sing Crafts and Gifts Company. I'm also going to go then now and I'm going to find my supplier contact template. This is the one that you'll be using as well. I'm gonna copy that. 
I'm going to put it back over here and just paste it in here. And remember, we don't want to send it just like this. We have to customize it for ourselves. So first, we'll put in the name Deer, and her name is Nikita Yu. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to copy this whole thing with her company name too. Paste that in. So Nikita Yu, and then I'll make it of Wellington Crafts and Gifts Company. Just makes it look a little more professional. My name is, and I'm going to put my name in here. Mike McClary, I'm sorry if you hear me typing away here, I'm a loud typer. And I am the owner of, let's come up with a company name, Wonder Wine Industries. Yeah, that makes me sound really cool. And we talk a little bit about what we do. So a company specializing in products for, and then I insert our name here. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit, because like we mentioned earlier, don't just send these uh, verbatim the way that we are giving them to you. You want to change them around a little bit to put your own flavor. So I'm going to say um, Mike McClary, owner of Wonder Wine Industries, a company that makes and sells high-end kitchen products. There we go. Uh, we're currently looking to expand our product line and are interested in one of the items that you manufacture. So I'm just going to change it up and are interested in the rabbit corkscrew. That way they'll know what it is and I kind of change it to my own wording there. I'm gonna go down, I think everything else is pretty much the same. I could go in here and actually change things around a little bit as well. And I do recommend you look at that, uh, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna go down and put my name in at the bottom. Regards, Mike McClary, owner of Wonder Wine Industries. Now, I am not logged into Alibaba right now. Uh, otherwise, it would automatically send her my email address and contact information. Um, but since I'm not, I can just put my email address in right there. And then when I'm done, all I need to do is click Send Inquiry Now. And within usually 24 hours, I'll get a message back from hopefully Nikita Yu of this company answering the questions here. And it's as simple as that. Now, remember, you want to do this for five to ten different suppliers for each of your product opportunities. So that's it. Now you know how to find and contact multiple suppliers for each of your top product opportunities, whether those suppliers are in the United States using Google or overseas using Alibaba.com. The next step is to go start finding and contacting at least five to 10 suppliers for each of your top three product opportunities. And then as suppliers get back with you, you can capture those that seem like they might be a good match on your product opportunity spreadsheet. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to better estimate our true profit so that we can finally determine which products to order your samples for. So I'll see you in the very next lesson.